Good afternoon, students. I'm Dr. Tanya Bose. Welcome you to the sixth session, or perhaps the seventh session of complex analysis today. So I hope I'm audible and the slides are also visible to everybody. Okay. So let's discuss the problems that I gave you yesterday. So this was the first problem. Evaluate the integral over C. 3z squared plus 7z plus 1 upon z plus 1 dz. Where C is the circle, mod z equal to half. So yesterday we did a very, very important topic. That is Cauchy's theorem and Cauchy's integral formula. And two more related to Cauchy's formula. That is the extension of Cauchy's theorem and then the nth derivative formula, right? So we have seen that the first job is to check the singularities of the function. And the second thing is to plot the given curve, right? So if the singularity lies outside the given curve, then we are safe and we apply the Cauchy's theorem. And the answer to the integral is always equal to zero. And whenever we are, the singularity lies inside the circle, then we have to apply the integral formula. And then we have seen that if there are two singularity points, then we have to apply the extension theorem, right? So now let's see what happens in this particular question. So f of z is 3z squared plus 7z plus 1 upon z plus 1. So if I check the singularities of this function, check the denominator. So the only problematic point is z equal to minus 1. So let's draw the figure and see where will z equal to minus 1 lie. So mod z equal to half means circle centered at the origin and the radius is half. So z equal to minus 1 lies outside the circle. And hence, we are safe. So by Cauchy's theorem, the function is analytic inside and on C. And hence, by Cauchy's theorem, the answer to this integral is equal to 0. Right? So I think everybody got it correct. Okay, so the next question is evaluate e to the power half dz where c is a circle mod z equal to 1, right? Now in this question, you can see that the function is simply e to the power half and the given circle is centered at 0 origin and the radius is 1. So according to this, what is the function? It is simply e to the power half. So there is no denominator. So if there is no denominator, that means that function is the safest one. There is no problematic point. The function is analytic or it is defined everywhere, right? So in this case, the function is analytic everywhere inside the given circle. And hence, if it is analytic inside, what happens? By Cauchy's theorem, the integral of the function happens to be zero, right? So I hope all of you got the answers correct for both these questions. Okay. We move to the third exercise. The third exercise was evaluate tan z upon z square minus 1 where c is the circle mod z equal to 3 by 2. So first of all, let's see what are the singularities of this function. So if you check the denominator, it is z square minus 1. So there are two singularities. One is z equal to 1 and the other one is z equal to minus 1. Now let us see where will these singularities lie. So the circle is centered at origin and the radius is 3 by 2. And there are two singularities. One is at z equal to minus 1 and the set second one is centered at z equal to 1. So if you remember, I gave you two methods yesterday. So you can do by any method. Perhaps I will show you the solutions through both the methods. So whichever method you have worked with, you can check your answer accordingly, right? So the first method was using extension theorem. If there are two singularities, then we have to use the extension of Cauchy's theorem. So for that purpose, what do we do? We make a hole at both the singularities, right? So we mark the first one, the singularity at z equal to minus one, we draw a circle over here. The purple circle denotes C1. And we mark a second circle at z equal to 1. And we mark it as circle C2. So by extension theorem, 
integral over c the given function it is same as integral over c1 plus integral over c2 right now let us calculate both these integrals separately but before we calculate you must be clear that in the denominator there should be only one term right and that term corresponds to the singularity point so we have to rearrange the terms in such a way that we are only left with one term in the denominator in both the integrals so how is that rearrangement done now if you check out the first integral it has to be calculated over c1 c1 corresponds to the circle which is centered at z equal to minus 1 so if it is centered at z equal to minus 1 that means what is the singularity point it is z plus 1 So if I make factors of z square minus one, I get one factor as z minus one and the second factor as z plus one. So I have to retain z plus one in the denominator and I will transfer z minus one in the numerator, right? Likewise for the second integral over c two, it is a circle centered at z equal to one. So if it is centered at z equal to one, I will retain in the denominator the term corresponding to z equal to one. So it is z minus one. So the numerator term becomes tan z upon z plus one. Now let us calculate both these integrals. But when you compare it with Cauchy's integral formula, your f of z is tan z upon z minus one, and z minus a becomes equal to z plus one. So you get the value of a as minus one, and when you compute it using the Cauchy's integral formula, you will get your answer as pi iota tan one. Likewise, for the second integral. Your function f z is tan z upon z plus one, and z minus a is equal to z minus one, so a becomes equal to one. And again, using Cauchy's integral formula, the answer is pi iota into tan. Now put down both the values in this formula, so your answer becomes two pi iota tan one for the curve C. Right. So this solution was based on the extension theorem. Now let us see the answer. The same solution with the help of partial fractions. Now, when we do it by partial fractions, the story of singularity, the circle, they remain the same, right? So that is all similar. First of all, we try to make the partial fractions of the denominator term. So, on making the partial fractions, we get half upon z minus one plus minus half upon z plus one. So we try to write our Integral in this form. So the given integral over c tan z upon z square minus one dz. According to these partial fractions, it becomes half integral over c tan z upon z minus one dz minus half tan z upon z plus one dz. Right. Now let us see how to evaluate these integrals. We move on to the next slide. This is the same step that we wrote in the last slide. Now, when I compare it, let's calculate the first integral. Now, when I compare it with the Cauchy's integral formula, this was our Cauchy's integral formula. So, when I compare it, your f of z is tan z, z minus a is z minus one, so a is one. So, the first integral it becomes equal to two pi iota tan one. Similarly, when I calculate the second one. To calculate the second integral again, when I compare it with the Cauchy's integral formula, f of z is tan z, and the value of a comes out to be minus one. So on calculating it, the answer to the integral is minus two pi iota tan one. Substitute these two values in this form, so we get the net answer to the curve C. The integral over C curve is two pi iota tan. So by whichever method you do it, you'll get the same answer, right? So I hope you could do these two questions. Okay. Now, so this was all about yesterday's lecture. Now let us proceed to our today's topic. So today I will be telling you about two things: power series, and the second one is Taylor series. Although both of them you have done in your junior classes, but both the series that was taught to you was in terms of reals. Now we are going to do it in compound. The concept remains the same, only that there is an incorporation of a complex constant there, right? So let us first see the first section, that is the power series. So what is the meaning of power series? 
power series is a series in the powers of z minus z naught. So we write a power series as a naught plus a one z minus z naught plus a two z minus z naught square plus so on. So in compact form, if I want to write it in the form of a summation, I can write it as summation n going from zero to infinity a n z minus z naught whole raised to power n. So you can see that by giving the values n equal to zero, one, two, three, you will get these values. You can just check it out. Put n equal to zero, you will get a naught z minus z naught raised to power zero. So you will simply get a naught as the answer. When you put n equal to one, you will get a one z minus z naught. When you put n equal to two, you will get a two z minus z naught square, and so on. Right. So this is what is a power series. The series is in the form of z minus z naught. Now here, in this power series, the z is a complex variable. All these coefficients a naught, a one, a two, and so on, they may be complex or they may be real, and it the center of the series is said to be z naught, right? So whatever we write after z, z minus z naught, so this z naught. Will be called the center of the series, right? Now somehow, if the value of this z naught becomes equal to zero, that means we will obtain a power series in the powers of z now because z naught is now zero. So this given power series, it will get reduced to put z naught equal to zero. So you will get summation n going from zero to infinity a n z to the power n. And when you expand this, you will get a naught plus a one z plus a two z square plus so on, right? Okay. Next, we will talk about the convergence and divergence of a power series. Now, what do you mean by convergence and divergence? Like you do in physics, we say that a ray of light it converges at suppose at the focus. So, what does it mean? That all the rays they are concentrating at the focal point. Similarly, if I say that the rays of light are diverging, that means they do not meet. They are moving away from a particular point. The same thing we talk about in a power series also. So you can see that in a power series, it is an infinite sum, right? So if that infinite sum converges to a certain point, that means the sum after a few terms it becomes almost constant. That means you are adding very negligible terms in your higher terms. So what will happen? The series sum will always come out to be same, almost same in all the further cases. So in that case, we will say that the power series is convergent. And when do we say that the power series is divergent? If the series sum go on increasing and increasing every time, you add the terms and you get a bigger number. In that case, we say that the power series diverges, right? But how we will we call it a uh, convergent or divergent in the context of complex? We will talk it in the form of a circle of convergence, right? We say that if the power series is centered at z naught, that means z naught is the center of the power series, and r is the suitable radius, then if you take any z, if you take any complex variable z within this circle of convergence. Then the power series will always be convergent, and if you take any z beyond this radius, that means if the value of z becomes the distance between z and z naught becomes greater than r, then we will say that the series will be divergent. Right? How to calculate this out? I will let you know in the next slides. So just for now, remember that the circle of convergence is given by mod z minus z naught equal to r. Where z naught is called the center of convergence and r is called the radius of convergence. Whenever z minus z naught is less than r, the power series will always converge. And whenever z minus z naught is greater than r, the power series will always diverge. Right? Now, there are two notations in this. One is R equal to infinity and R equal to zero, right? What are the meaning of this? What do you mean when R becomes infinity, and what do you mean when R becomes zero? So if I just go back to the previous slide, and if I just refer to this diagram, 
If I say that R is equal to zero, what does what does it mean? That this circle has been punctured to the point Z naught. If the radius becomes zero, right? And if I say that R is equal to infinity, that means what does it mean? It is a very big circle which includes everything, isn't it? So now let us see what is the meaning of R equal to zero and infinity. R equal to infinity will mean that the series converges for all Z. If it includes everything, that means there is no point beyond which it will diverge. It will converge for every point of Z. And when R is equal to zero, it will mean that the series converges only at the center. That is Z equal to Z. Else everywhere it will diverge. Right? Okay. Next is... How do we calculate the radius of convergence? We have just said that Z minus Z naught is equal to R is the circle of convergence. Now the next important thing is how do we calculate that R? How will we fix that value of R for any power series? So this is the method. To calculate the radius of convergence, R is always equal to limit n tends to infinity mod of a n upon a n plus 1. It is also same as 1 upon limit n tends to infinity, nth root of a n, right? So in some questions, we can apply this formula. In some questions, we can apply this formula. I will let you know where we need to apply which one, right? Now, what are these a n? This a n is same as the coefficient a n present in your power series. So if, if there is any question to calculate the radius of convergence, the power series will always be given to you in the question. So from there, you can calculate the values of a n. If you know a n, you can calculate a n plus 1 also. You can simply replace n with n plus 1 to use this formula. And if you are using this formula, you just need a n, right? Then you have to calculate the limit as n tends to infinity. And whatever answer after calculating the limit you get, that will become the radius of convergence, right? Now let's... Convergence of the power series, this is given to you, summation n going from 0 to infinity, 2n factorial upon n factorial square, z minus 3 r ta raised to power n. What are the options given? These are the four options provided to you. So first of all, let us see how to calculate the radius of convergence. So the given question was this, we compare it with the power series definition. So the power series definition is summation a n z minus z naught raised to power n. By comparing it, you can easily tell me that the, what is a n? a n is equal to 2 n factorial upon n factorial square, right? Now let us calculate a n plus 1. a n plus 1, you will simply replace n with n plus 1. So when you replace n with n plus 1, this term will become 2 n plus 2. So you get 2n plus 2 factorial in the numerator. Likewise, when you replace n with n plus 1 in the denominator, n factorial will become n plus 1 factorial, right? Now, we will use the formula r is equal to limit n tends to infinity a n upon a n plus 1. Now, why am I using this formula? Whenever in the questions, factorial terms are involved. If I use this formula, won't some of the terms get cancelled? So if some of the terms get cancelled, it will simplify and to calculate the limit, it will become easy. So if the value of a n is such that on writing a n plus 1, a few terms can get cancelled, you can always apply the first form. Right? So that is why in this question, we are applying the first one. Right? So according to the first formula, what is my r? r is limit n tends to infinity, the value of a n divided by a n plus 1. So whenever there is a division sign, it gets converted to multiplication and this term will get flipped. So this becomes n plus 1 factorial square divided by 2 n plus 2 whole factorial, right? Now simple mathematics, you can take a pen and a paper and do these calculations. Now when you expand 2 n plus 2 factorial, what will you get? 2 n plus 2 2n plus 1 and then 2n factorial. So 2n factorial gets cancelled with 2n factorial. So what is left? 
2n plus 2 into 2n plus 1. Right? Now let us see what is common in these two terms. Expand n plus 1 factorial. What will you get? n plus 1 into n factorial. So n factorial will get cancelled. Now since there is a square term, so what is left in the numerator? n plus 1 whole square. Right? So what is left after cancellation? We are left with limit n tends to infinity, n plus 1 whole square divided by 2n plus 2 upon into 2n plus 1. Now, everything has been reduced to the lowest form. Now, let us take the limit. Now, to take the limit as n tends to infinity, you will never put n equal to infinity, right? If you remember bilinear transformations, there also I told you the concept, how to take the limit as n tends to infinity. You will make the term 0. How to make it 0? We will first take out n common, right? So let us take out n common from the numerator and the denominator. So when you take out n common from the numerator, there is a square term present. So n square will come out. What is left? 1 plus 1 by n. Similarly, when you take out n common from the denominator, 1n will come out from here, 1n will come out from here. So both the n square will get cancelled. What is left here? 2 plus 2 by n. And what is left here? 2 plus 1 by n. Right? Now when you take n tends to infinity, the numerator, only 1 will be present because 1 by n will become 0 as n tends to infinity. Similarly, in the denominator, what is left? 2 is left from the first term. 2 is left from the second term. Because this term will become 2 by n, that will become 0. This term will become 1, that will become 0. So what is left? The final answer is 1 by 4. Right? So how do we write now? We will say that the series converges in the open disk. If you remember my last slide, what was the convergence? The series was converging for mod z minus z not less than r. R we have calculated. R is 1 by 4. Now what is Z naught? Look at the given series. What is the center of the series given to us in the question? 3 iota. So we will say that the series converges for the disk mod Z minus 3 iota less than 1 by 4. So the series has radius 1 by 4 and the center is 3 iota. Right? Any doubts in this question? Okay. For the last step, this step, I will request all of you to take a pen and a paper and do it on your own. Only then you will be able to do. Take out n square common from the numerator and denominator and see what is left. You will get 1 plus 1 by n. Here you will get 2 plus 2 by n. This term will become 2 plus 1 by n. And then take n tends to infinity and see do you get 1 by 4 or not. Right? Take a pen and a paper and please do it. Take the, take the limit as n tends to infinity. And then how to write this step? If I just show you the last slide. What was the definition for convergence? How do we write it? We write that a series converges for z minus z not less than r. So we are calculating the radius of convergence in the question and we are writing z not the value that is given to us in the question. So in this form, you have to write the answer, right? So that is why, what are we doing? We are simply writing that the radius of convergence is 1 by 4. So z minus z naught. What is z naught? If you compare this, you will get that z naught is equal to 3 iota. So the series converges in the disk mod z minus 3 iota less than 1 by 4. We are not calculating z. 
because we are saying that when the circle is centered at three eta and the radius of that circle is one by four, if you take any z within that circle, the series will always converge. And if you take any z outside that circle, the series will always diverge. So we don't have to calculate z. One of the students is asking me how we will calculate z. We are not calculating z, right? Okay. I think I just explained how it is converging, right? And for the factorial part, I will request you to cancel these terms, expand 2n plus 2 factorial and n plus 1 factorial. Automatically, the terms will get cancelled. Do it with your own hands, only then you will be able to do it. And then take the limit as n tends to infinity. Take out n common from the numerator and denominator. And when you take out n common and when you take n tends to infinity, you will get 1 by 2. Right? Okay. We move on to the second example. Okay, so the answer to this question becomes what is the radius of convergence? The radius of convergence, the option that is 1 by 4, right? Now we move on to the second example. In the second example, we have to calculate the radius of convergence of the power series 4 to the power n into z plus 1 whole raised to power n. So again, the options are given. So let us first work out and then we will see which option matches, right? So the given power series is 4 to the power n into z plus 1 raised to power n. When you compare it with a n z minus z naught raised to power n, what is a n? a n comes out to be 4 to the power n. And what is z naught? z naught is minus 1, right? So z naught is required at the last step when we have to write the circle of convergence. Now, when to apply the... I told you that a n upon a n plus 1 will be applied whenever factorials are involved or you can find out the terms which can be cancelled, right? Now, when will the other formula be applied? The other formula was limit, 1 upon limit n tends to infinity nth root of a n. So, whenever in a n, power of n is present, only then it will be possible to take the nth root. So, in such cases, we can apply the second form, right? This question can also be done using the first formula also. If you write a n plus 1, you will get 4 to the power n plus 1. And automatically, terms will get cancelled, right? So, I'm just telling you that this particular formula is mainly used whenever a n involves power n terms. So, you can see that a n has 4 to the power n. So, when I will take the nth root, the powers will get cancelled. So, in that particular case, we mostly use the formula, right? So, let us apply R. So, a n is 4 to the power n. And when I take the nth root of 4, nth root means taking power as 1 by n. So, n will get cancelled with 1 by n. So, what is my answer? It is simply 1 by 4. So, how will I write my disk? It is z minus z naught less than R. So, what is z minus z naught? It is already given to you in the question. It is z plus 1. Less than r. What is r? r is 1 by 4. So, if you take any z lying in this circle of convergence, only then the series will converge. Rest everywhere it will diverge. So, the radius of the disk is 1 by 4 and the center of the disk is minus 1. Right? So accordingly, the correct option to this question becomes 1 by 4, right? So this was simple enough, right? Simple limits, I think you can do it on your own also. There is nothing to explain. If you take the limit here, 4 to the power n whole to the power 1 by n. Only 4 is left. So the limit is 1 by 4. What should I explain here? This is quite clear. Okay. Now, note down these two exercises. I will discuss their answers tomorrow. So you have to find out the radius of convergence for both the power series. Please note it down.
So this will be very easy question. For this, you have to think, right? So do it. And only then you will get to know what problem you faced in this question. So we will discuss the answer tomorrow. So now we move on to the second section of today's presentation. That is Taylor series. So already Taylor series you have discussed in junior classes also. So the same Taylor series we are going to do here. Only that in place of a real variable. Now you will have a complex variable. Right. Okay. So let's see what is a Taylor series expansion. Now in a Taylor series expansion the theorem says that if fz is analytic on mod z minus z not less than r then f of z is equal to summation n going from 0 to infinity f nth derivative at z naught divided by n factorial into z minus z naught whole raised to power n for all z on mod z minus z naught less than r. So whenever we talk about a series, whether it is a power series or it is a Taylor series, we are always concerned with the circle of convergence. And we are always concerned where does that series converge, right? So here also we are saying that the series converges for mod z minus z naught less than r. So you can see that there is a circle whose center is at z naught and the radius of the circle is r. So if you take any z within this circle, it will always converge. And if you take any z beyond this circle, the series is not convergent. So we are not concerned with those z. We are only concerned with those z which are lying inside the circle. So this we have to always interpret our answer in this form. Mod z minus z naught is less than r. Right? Now if I quickly expand this summation, what will I get? When I expand this summation, put n equal to 0, what will you get? f 0th derivative at z naught. It is simply f of z naught. 0 factorial is 1. z minus z naught raised to power 0, that is also 1. So what is the first term? The first term is f at z naught. Plus, put n equal to 1. When you put n equal to 1, what is the second term? f dash z naught divided by 1 factorial into z minus z naught raised to power 1. So that I have written here. Now put n equal to 2. You will get f double dash z naught divided by 2 factorial z minus z naught raised to power 2. So that is my third term. Now put n equal to 3. What will you get? f triple dash at z naught divided by 3 factorial into z minus z naught raised to power 3 and so right so if you remember your partial differentiation in m1 you have done taylor series there also and also in plus 1 plus 2 also you have done taylor series so it is the same series there you were writing there in form of f of x x was a real variable now we are writing it in the form of f series remains the same right okay and you can see that in this power series this is also a power series because it is in the terms of z minus z naught so you can see that this center it is centered at z naught so this is very important that your power series in the general form it is always centered at z naught that means the series is being written in the powers of z minus z naught right okay now, let us see how to work it out in the examples, in the questions. Now, the first question says, determine the Taylor series f of z equal to 1 upon 2 plus z around z equal to 0. Now, what is the meaning of around z equal to 0? That means you have to write the answer, the Taylor series, centered at z equal to 0 point. What does it mean? If I go back to the previous slide, if it is centered at 0, that means the z0 point should be equal to 0. Right? Okay. Now, let's see. I am not discussing this diagram right now. 
So if I just write my Taylor series expansion, what is f of z according to the definition? It is f at z0, z0 is 0. So we get f of 0. into z minus 0 plus f double dash 0 divided by 2 factorial into z minus 0 whole square plus so, right? Now to evaluate this, we have to calculate. So don't you think it will take a lot of time because the function is not that simple, isn't it? It contains a denominator. So you have to apply the portion rule here, right? So since you have to attempt this in MCQ, we will not go by this method because it will take a lot of time. So we take the help of a shortcut to write the Taylor series expansion. And what is that shortcut now? Listen to me very carefully. You have done binomial. So this result was done there. 1 upon 1 minus W. This is equal to W naught is same as 1. So you can also write this term as 1. So 1 upon 1 minus W is equal to 1 plus W plus W square plus so on. So this is equal to what? You can write it as summation n going from 0 to infinity W raised to power n. Right? Now to use this binomial, what is the mandatory condition? The condition is that mod of w this term it should be always less than one so whenever we are using the shortcut we have to obey this rule right now let us see how to write how to incorporate this binomial in our question so f of z is one upon two plus z now look at this term the constant term should be one what is our constant term here it is two how will you make it one you have to take out two common. So I'm taking out two common. What am I left with? 1 plus z by 2. Now 1 plus z by 2. I need a minus sign. So I'm incorporating two negative. Now you can compare it with this. And you can see that what is W? W is minus Z by 2. That is why I've written it in writing, right? So that it becomes very clear. Now, 1 upon 1 minus W was same as summation W to the power N. So if I write this term in summation form, it becomes 1 by 2, that was out. Summation N going from 0 to infinity, minus Z by 2 whole raised to power N, right? Now, let us just simplify this term. Minus sign you can take out. Minus will come n times. So, it is becoming minus 1 raised to power n. Z to the power n. That is being written here. In the denominator, you will get 2 to the power n. And there is 1, 2 outside also. So, that will also come in. And it will become 2 to the power n plus 1. Now, from where will I get this condition? I told you in the beginning that whenever we are going to apply binomial, the condition is that W should be, mod of W should be less than 1. Now, according to the question, what is W? W is minus Z by 2. So, mod of W will become minus Z by 2 mod. And modulus of a negative term is always positive. So, we will get modulus of Z by 2 is less than 1. And when I cross multiply, what will I get? I will get mod z is less than 2. So now this becomes my circle of convergence. That means it is centered at the origin. It is z. If you compare it with z minus z0, what is my z0? z0 is 0. That is where I have to expand it. Around z equal to 0. So the center was 0. So automatically I got z here and it is less than 2. 2 means 2 is the radius of convergence. Right? So you can think, you can very easily see that in two steps, I could determine the Taylor series expansion. Otherwise, if I had to go by the derivative method, I had to calculate the first derivative, second derivative, then I had to put down zero in it. So it would take a couple of steps. So in just two steps, I could calculate the Taylor series expansion. Right? And I also got 
that what is my circle of convergence directly clear any doubts in this question okay i'll just explain the last step again how is mod z less than 2 now to apply this condition 1 upon 1 minus w is only this when mod of w is less than 1 i told you that please take care of this condition then mod w should be less than 1 if mod w is less than 1 in our question what is w it is minus z by 2 so if i put the value of minus z by 2 here modulus of minus z by 2 less than 1 modulus of negative term is positive so it will become modulus of z by 2 less than 1 and when you cross multiply what will you get mod z is less than 2 so this is how we get mod z I hope it is clear. So in this question, you can see that Z was centered at zero, right? Now, suppose in any question, the center is not given to you. Only it is told that determine the Taylor series of that function. So you will always take the center as zero if it is not given to you, right? And when you expand any series centered at the point zero, it is called as a McLaurin series, right? So Taylor, McLaurin series is a special case of Taylor series when you expand the series about z equal to zero. If it is given, very good. If it is not given, then you will always assume the center to be z equal to zero. And in that case, Taylor series is called the McLaurin series, right? Now let us look at the next example. The next example says, it is the same question, but I've just changed the center. Earlier, the center was z equal to 0. Now you have to find out the Taylor series at z equal to 1. So if you just go back to the definition of Taylor series, this was the Taylor series expansion. Now your center is 1. That means z0 is equal to 1. That means in your answer that you will write at the end, the CD should come out in the powers of Z minus 1, right? Okay, now let's go back to the question and see how to calculate the Taylor series expansion of this function around Z equal to 1. Now to calculate the Taylor series at Z equal to 1, we have to make this Z as Z minus 1. I just told you that Z minus Z naught, Z naught is 1. So I have to get my answer in terms of z minus 1, right? So how will I make it z minus 1? How will I write minus 1 here? I have to balance the terms. That means I will add 1 and I will subtract 1 in this case, right? So when I add 1 and I subtract 1, I get an expression of this kind. So I get 2 plus 1, it will become 3. And in place of z, I will get z minus 1. So you can see that now the center is around z equal to 1. Earlier, in the previous question, the center was around z equal to 0. So I didn't have to do anything because I was simply getting z. So what if the center is something apart from 0, you have to first make that change, right? So this term is now 1 upon 3 plus z minus 1. Now, to apply this form, the constant term should be 1. What is the constant term here? It is 3. How will I make it 1? I have to take out 3 common. So I will take out 3 common. And I, I should also get a negative sign here after 1. So I will write 1 minus. When I take out 3 common, I will be left with minus z minus 1 by 3. So you can see that if I compare this term with this original term, 1 upon 1 minus w, I am writing the same ink for w and minus z minus 1 by 3. That means what is my w? w is minus z minus 1 by 3. Apply the formula. So what is this? It is 1 by 3 into summation n going from 0 to infinity w to the power n. Place the value of w. Now simple calculations. Minus sign is coming how many times? n times. So it is minus 1 to the power n. z minus 1 is coming n times. How many times is 3 coming in the denominator? 
3 to the power n from here and 3 is also outside the summation so take it inside it becomes 3 to the power n plus 1. So this is the answer to your Taylor series and you have to also write the circle of convergence. Where will this Taylor series converge? So from where will you get this condition? Apply here. This was the value of W. So mod W is less than 1. Place the value of W here. It is minus that minus 1 by 3. So modulus of negative term is positive. So you will get mod z minus 1 by 3 is less than 1. And when you cross multiply, you will get mod z minus 1 is less than 3. So from here, we get to know that the center of the power series or the data series is 1. And the radius of convergence is equal to 3. Right? Okay. So in both the questions, you can see that the denominator term, the power was simply 1. Right? Now let us see that what happens if the power exceeds 1. Look at the question. Here you can see that the same question is being taken, but I have increased it from 1 to 2. So how to apply that same formula in this question? gz is equal to minus 1 upon 2 plus z whole square. And you have to find the centered, the uh, Taylor series at z equal to 1. Right? So for these, when the power is not 1 here, when the power is more than 1, we will use this formula. This also formula for binomial 1 upon 1 plus z raised to power m. You can take this term to the numerator. It becomes 1 plus z whole raised to power minus m. And when you expand it using the binomial series, you will get 1 minus mz plus m into m plus 1 by 2 into z square minus m into m plus 1 into m plus 2 by 3 z cube and so on. And if you want to write the same expansion in a short form, you can write it as summation m going from 0 to infinity minus m and n. What is the symbol? The symbol is simply minus m choose n, z to the power n. So now with the help of this expansion, let us see how to get the data series. So this is our function minus 1 upon 2 plus z whole square. First of all, the center of this circle or this Taylor series is z equal to 1. So here I have z, I have to make it as z. So on adding 1, 2 plus 1 will become 3. So I will get minus 3 plus z minus 1 whole square. So now to apply this formula, the first term, the so I will get 9. And I am left with 1 plus z minus 1 by 3 whole square. Right? Let's take this term in the numerator. So we will get 9, 1 plus z minus 1 by 3, 4 raised to power minus 2. So this term goes to the numerator. It becomes minus 2 power. So now can you compare this term with this term? So here it was z. Now we have z minus 1 by 3. And what is the value of m? m is equal to 2. So now... If I write it in the short form, it becomes minus 1 by 9, which is the constant out. Here, it is minus m choose n. So we write it as minus 2 choose n. And what is z? z is z minus 1 by 3 whole raised to power n. And if I want to write it in the expanded form, I can write it as minus 1 by 9. That is the constant out. The first term is 1. Second term is minus mz. What is m? m is equal to 2. So 2 into what is my z? z is z minus 1 by 3. So I'm writing it over here. What is my next term? m into 
m plus 1. So we get 2 into 3 divided by 2. z minus 1 by 3 whole square minus m into m plus 1 into m plus 2 divided by 3 into z cube. So here z is z minus 1 by 3 whole cube plus so on. And then again, what is the circle of convergence? All these conditions imply only when mod z is less than 1. So in this case, what is your z? It is z minus 1 by 3. So if mod of z minus 1 by 3 is less than 1, after cross multiplying, what condition will you get? You will get mod z minus 1 is less than 3. So from here, we get to know that the circle of convergence, the center of convergence is 1 and the radius of convergence of this Taylor series is 3. Right? So we have seen three questions. Two questions where the denominator power was only 1. So with the help of the simple binomial series formula, we could expand it. And when the power exceeds 1, then we have to use this one. Right? Okay. Any doubts so far in this question? Okay. Now we move on to the next type of question. You have to find the Taylor series of this function. Now you can see that in the denominator, there are two different products, right? And you have to find out the Taylor series expansion centered at or around the point z equal to c, right? So now what is to be done? Whenever you have two different terms in the denominator, the only method is use partial fractions and split the terms, right? So we try to apply the partial fractions and we write this term as 5 upon z plus 3 minus 4 upon z plus 2. Now I think you understood how to do it. Take up each term, write its Taylor series and then put it back in this form. Right? So first let us take up the term 5 upon z plus 3. Now what is the center? z is equal to 0. That means I don't have to do any manipulations in this z because my answer should be in terms of z. Now, to use this formula, 1 upon 1 minus w, the constant term should be 1. So, here, what is the constant term? It is 3. So, let us take out 3 common first. So, when I take out 3 common, I will get 5 by 3 into 1 upon z by 3 plus 1. Right? Now, let us apply this. Now, to apply this, after 1, I should have a negative sign. So, I have to rearrange the terms. I have to write it as 1 plus z by 3. And then how will I convert this plus? I can incorporate two negative signs. So I'm writing it as 1 minus minus z by 3. Right? And now, when I apply the summation formula, my w is minus z by 3. So what do I get? I get 5 by 3. Summation minus z by 3 whole raised to power n. And when you open up, when you simply calculate it, you can take out, take 5 and 3 inside. You will get 5 into minus sign comes n times. So we get minus 1 raised to power n, z to the power n, and 3. 3 to the power n is inside and 1, 3 is outside also. So we get 3 to the power n plus 1. And what is the circle of convergence? What was my w? It was minus z by 3. So put it here. Mod of minus z by 3 less than 1. So modulus of negative term is positive. So you will get mod z by 3 is less than 1. Which will imply mod z is less than 3. Right? Now let us take up the second term. 4 upon z plus 2. 4 upon z plus 2, the same concept. We will apply the same formula. Let's make the constant term first 1. We'll take out 2 common. It will become z by 2 plus 1. 2 and 4 gets cancelled. It becomes 2. Then I have to rearrange the terms. I will make it 1 minus minus z by 2. Now I can apply the formula. 
So my W now is minus Z by 2. So this can be written as 2 into summation minus Z by 2 whole raised to power N. And if I take out, if I take this 2 inside, I will get minus sign comes minus 1 to the power N, Z to the power N. 1, 2 will get cancelled. So I will get 2 to the power N minus 1. And now what will be my circle of convergence? Minus mod z by 2 is less than 1. So I will get mod z is less than 2. Right? So I have separately calculated the Taylor series expansion for both these fractions. Now let us put down these two values in this expression to get the Taylor series expansion for hz. So finally, h of z becomes, I have simply put these two values here. So I am getting this. Now, if some terms are common, you can take out those terms common. So, summation minus 1 to the power n and z to the power n I have taken out common. What am I left with? I am left with 5 upon 3 to the power n plus 1 minus 1 upon 2 to the power n minus 1. And now, for the first one, the circle of convergence was mod z less than 3. For the second one, the circle of convergence is mod z less than 2. For the combined one, how will I calculate the circle of convergence? I will take the smallest of the two regions. Mod z less than 3 means circle whose center is at 0, origin, and radius is 3. And mod z less than 2 means circle whose center is at origin and radius is 2. So which one is the smallest among them? It is mod z less than 2. So I will take the smallest out of the two regions. Right? So this will be my Taylor series expansion for the function hz centered at z equal to 0. Right? I hope this question is clear. Any doubts in this question? Any doubts? Mod Z less than one. I think in every question I'm repeating the same data. Mod z less than 1 means what? Center is at origin. Radius is 1. That is the meaning mod z less than 1. Yesterday also I told you about these curves. It is a circle whose center is at origin and radius is 1. Any doubts in this question? I am not getting any doubts. Okay. Now we have two exercises. You can just note it down. If the Taylor series of f of z about z equal to 5 is this, then what is A2? And these are the options given to you. So you have to choose the correct option. You can note it down. We will discuss the answers tomorrow. So I, I hope you have copied it down.
And the next question is this one. If the function is not analytic at z equal to z naught, then you have to mark the correct option. So I've given you almost four questions to do today. So try these two are very basic questions. So you have to find out in the earlier two questions the radius of convergence. And we are left with one more topic that is Lorentz series that we will cover up tomorrow. And with that, your syllabus for complex as well as your syllabus for D, E, and T, differential equations and transformations, will be completed tomorrow. Right? Okay. So if you have any doubts in today's lecture, you can ask me. Any doubts, you can just go through the lecture once again, because there are a few concepts that you need to go through again. So. Even if you have doubts, you can drop your doubts to me at my mail address. So I'm closing the session. Thank you so much. Okay.